Live from Vienna, Austria, it's theCUBE. Covering .next Europe 2016, brought to you by Nutanix. Here's your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to theCUBE. Happy to welcome to the program a first time guest, Nigel Henderson, who's the Chief Operating Officer of UCS Solutions, uh, which is a service provider uh, based in South Africa. That's Nigel, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much, thanks for the invite. All right, can, can you tell us a little bit about you know, your role uh, at UCS, how long you've been there, and maybe a thumbnail on the company itself? Sure. Uh, well, I've been there, believe it or not, 10 years, um, and the company is really around providing retail solutions, SAP retail solutions, uh, to our customers. We provide it through a leverage platform that's both people, process, and technology. Uh, we use the, the Nutanix product on, on our, our leverage environment, and I think we are one of the largest single English-speaking um, SAP service providers in, in the world. So we, we have about 270 odd uh, consultants who work on, on SAP retail. Wow, great. So we, we, you know, we've been watching in our communities uh, you know, the, the transformation of uh, SAP solutions as to you know, what lives in the cloud, what lives in various hosting environments. Uh, yeah. you know, definitely one that uh, is, has been of real interest. Before we get into uh, some yeah. of that, just sketch out for the company itself. How old's the company? How many locations? Uh, you know, any number of data centers or footprint yes. or whatever metrics you have? So we are primarily focused in, in South Africa. Uh, however, we've got a footprint in the United, uh, in the um, Middle East, and then also the United Kingdom. So we're focusing on the UK market quite extensively now, uh, in the tier two to retail market. Uh, we've uh, been around in various forms, certainly since uh, 1998, and uh, it, it's really the largest provider to on retail in, in the South African market. And we do a lot of work, believe it or not, for Walmart, because they bought. And, and when you look at the mix of your business, uh, you think service providers, it used to be kind of, there's hosting, there's colo, there's managed services. Uh, you know, what, what's the mix of services that, that, you, that you offer at UCS? Yeah, so we have a, a managed platform, which we then, uh, sell to our customers. So that's really, I suppose you call it a cloud, yeah. which has been running for, for about eight years. And, and your customers consume it as a service. Absolutely. Correct. Customers so consume it as a service. Whatever you we, call it, they, yeah. they, they don't care about what it's built or a yeah. uh, little bit where, it's, where it is, but uh, yeah. And we do it from, from uh, desktop services all the way to the host environments. And the, the, it's really private cloud for them, hybrids I suppose, uh, on our platform, but a dedicated area to, to their, their particular needs that they need on, yeah. Okay, um, and since, since you mentioned SAP, I'm, I'm curious, does like, you know, do you compete against VirtuStream then, is uh, you know, a company that EMC, now Dell EMC, acquired for over a billion dollars, you know, SAP was a big you know, focus of, of what yeah. they do. So. I'm not familiar with that, that company, okay. but uh, we, we really just you know, do mainly the SAP implementation, which is very customized uh, solutions, yeah. Sure. Um, You've been around, uh, you know, been with the company long before Nutanix came on board. Yes. Uh, maybe can you give us, uh, you know, what led you to look at Nutanix? When we're talking about service providers, they have, you know, very particular needs and tend to build some of the stack themselves. So, you know, what led you down the path of looking at, a, you yeah. know, a, a, a solution like Nutanix? So Nutanix was, uh, we, we did a lot of research on it because it, again, retail is 24 by 7, 365, you can't go down. Um, and we want to make sure we had the right product. And the whole hyper-converged technology was something that was really interested to us. And, and that's the reason why we did all the testing and we did uh, the benchmarking based on performance and we then selected Nutanix. And we really have found that it, it takes away the requirement for your uh, storage, having a separate storage person and then a separate person who does the provisioning of services. You can integrate that into one single uh, team or so, uh, single platform. Okay. And uh, we then went down the road of yeah, Nutanix. Maybe you tell, what, what does that mean operationally for, for you know, did it you know, change roles, change skill set, change headcount? What, what was the impact of yeah. rolling out Nutanix? So, the Nutanix plus you know, also got Prism, which is on top of it, which is really a very easy way to provision and manage the whole environment, which meant that your skills requirement was not really having to be um, varied and also of a high, high level. Um, and we then decided that we had to start scaling down our existing environment 
and then scaling up the new environment. And you've got to make sure your business is all around people. You've got to make sure you've got the right people, the right technologies. And you couldn't then say to them, oh, don't worry, in three or four years' time, everything's going to be moved over to Nutanix. So we had to start that migration of skills into that new space. And at the same time, uh, ramping down the old environments, but keeping those people who are relevant uh, in, their in their particular skills, but ramping them up in their new skills. Okay, can you have some color? How did, how did that go? I mean, we, we, we just, I, I know you, you actually uh, got to interview Dr. Art Langer, who was yes. on, on our program right before you, yeah. uh, and just the whole dynamic of you know, trying new things, doing it differently is, you know, can be challenging. People yeah. will you know, push back against change. So how, how did that training go? Um, anything that you've learned going through it that you'd want to say, hey, you might want to think about yeah. this? What would you tell your peers uh, sure. that, about the skill set, the operational changes? Yeah. I mean, there was really interesting discussions around digital transformation, but really how do you get those skills on board? You've got to take people on the journey. I think that's the main thing, is getting people involved right up front into what you're wanting to achieve. And not saying that you know, you're going to get rid of individuals, you're wanting to make sure they're on a road or a path to, to achieve your end goal. And I think that whole uh, digital transformation is something that a company has to embrace. And it goes around innovation as well. If you don't put innovation together with that, and, and uh, let the people come up with the innovative ideas and then take them down the path of what, whatever that, that's going to be. And in this particular Nutanix um, idea and concept came from a uh, 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 cloud, cloud executive. He did some research and he's the one who drove it and it's been phenomenal in the actual uptake and the amount of, of uh, I suppose, saving in people and, and, and what we've been able to achieve in the business. Yeah. Oh, and What's the impact on your end users? You said the you know retail uh, is you know no stranger to digital transformation. Definitely sure. an industry yeah. uh, that, that, that's going a lot of change there. What uh, you know how, how do you how are you able to help your customers more with digital transformation? What is the impact uh, of, of you, yourselves in the digital? So that's a great question because <laughs> when you look at. Uh, retailers, they turn a penny over 20 times. They've got a very small margin which they work on and they squeeze us for every little bit. So it enabled us then to start looking at new technologies, new ways to drive down the overall business. And I think that's where we were able to, to start um, you know, pushing down the costs and then passing that through to the customers. And I said to uh, uh, um, Dr. Langer too that the, the challenge you had is that you've got to start cannibalizing your own market. You've got to realize that if you can take a 50% saving to your customers and reduce your revenue, but making sure that they're happy, you need to do that. And that's what we did, and then you've got a, a customer for life, I believe. Yeah, yeah, on the disruption part, the, the old joke is you can either set the menu or be on it. Absolutely. Uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very true, too. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, you're, so your customers, there's the kind of kind of the, the the we understand, especially service providers in general. Um, you, you, margins can be tight. You need to be able to pass those through retail, uh, yeah. really tight on things. Any, anything else? Uh, yeah, well, how does how does this help you with kind of, from an agility standpoint? Um, you know, what what is your ch internal change processes, or does that yeah. speeding up over time? I, I think that that's very relevant because you know the normal traditional way of of allocating services could take you anything up to three weeks by the time you've gone through your change control process. And what this does do, especially with uh, interfaces, is start provisioning services a lot quicker. As uh, long as you've got the capacity there, you can allocate it. But I think the real kicker and the benefit to the business is around high availability and uh, disaster recovery, I suppose you can't really uh, say is, is, is that anymore because you've got to have systems which you can automatically restore immediately. And that's what Nutanix also does for you. You can do a single system recovery in an off-site location within seconds. Um, and, and that really differentiates us for the customers because now they, don't, they can't have downtime and they're not going to get any downtime. So that's where they, they really, really benefit from that process. So, uh, I, I believe you, you said when we were getting ready for this that you were the first deployment of Nutanix in, uh, in the African uh, yep. theater, correct? Yes. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, do you buy direct from Nutanix? Do you have a channel partner? How is service support uh, of Nutanix solution? How have you seen yeah. them uh, you know, over the last two years? 
So we were definitely the first uh, in South Africa, and uh, I think the, we were speaking to one of the gentlemen yesterday. He was uh, flying out from the UK before they had a, a, a South African office. And uh, we were then, after doing all our due diligence, we decided to go for Nutanix. And I must say the whole interaction, the way they've engaged with us, they've uh, allowed us to go through the process of testing. Uh, they were quite aggressive on the original pricing to get a footprint in. And then they've utilized us too as a, uh, reference site. So a lot of the banks and the insurance companies have come to us and said, How, how's it going? And certainly from our, our perspective, we've had tremendous benefit from utilizing Nutanix and they've started embarking on that, that roadmap. But their support has been great. We had some issues on, on performance. We got the teams involved from overseas and local and we were able to address them very quickly. Yeah. Uh, over the last two years, product change has changed greatly. Uh, you know, how do you keep up with the change that they're driving, and you know, what are they doing good? What more would you like to see from them going forward? I don't think you could tell them to innovate any faster than they currently are innovating, so it's really great. Is, I mean, is that because you can't adopt it faster, or because they're just doing enough in your mind? I think they're doing enough without disrupting the ability to get a quality product out. Uh, of course, we'd like everything be everything to everyone, uh, and we then could change a lot of the other technologies, but I think that'll come over time. But they certainly are innovating, and Acropolis is a prime example. Acropolis is now your single hypervisor, which you can start integrating into to many of the other products. And that's made a significant difference, and saving to us also by, you, you take uh, VMware can be replaced over time with, with Acropolis. So there's some great innovation which we've seen now in the conference, at the conference, and I think if they can just uh, deliver on those, plus the networking component, it's going to make a huge difference to our lives. Okay. Yeah. And in your environment, you know, what percentage of your a applications you know, run on Nutanix? And, yeah. Uh, maybe start there. So, sorry, what? Is Nutanix the only thing you have, or you know, do you still have other pockets of infrastructure? No, we do have, of course, because we are running SAP workloads, there's a lot of other products which we, we have in, in the environment. Um, but Nutanix is the largest portfolio with our Linux and the, the Microsoft space. But we run AIX, the Unix, um, currently P-series. But there's a lot of discussion with uh, Nutanix to see how we can get those workloads in, in place. And the first, we are just uh, implementing the flash, with the flash um, on, the, on the hardware, which is going to make a difference in performance. And if that benchmarks correctly, we can move a lot more workloads across. Yeah. Excellent, and you, you mentioned you, you're using Prism today, correct? H yes. How does that tie into, you know, most service providers have their own software that they use to, to manage that environment. Are yeah. uh, you just tying in with the APIs, or are you using you know, two different things? Yeah. How, how does management of your entire environment work? So that's always a bone of contention as yeah. to how we, you know, what is going to be that single plane of glass? What are you going to use for the environment? So we've got different types of, of uh, environments which we manage. Um, but Prism is used primarily for the Nutanix space. And I think that what they're again doing is able to monitor other platforms is going to, by default, create a platform for us to be able to have a single pane of glass into the, to the various uh, environments in our space. So we don't really have a specific strategy yet. I would like to work extensively now with Nutanix to see how we can incorporate their whole cloud management and, and structure into our business because I think that's going to differentiate us in the market as to how we can orchestrate everything and have a single view into the environment. Yeah, so, so, so Nigel, you know, one of the questions I usually ask a service provider is uh, yeah. about Amazon. Um, you're <laughs> so in the retail you're space, <laughs> so um, yeah. I, I have to ask, you know, is, is, are all of your customers all, you know, what's their relationship with Amazon these days? So, as indicated by New, uh, Nutanix, I think they are our competition indirectly because they are service providers and they they have been talking to us as well and I think what they're going to be used in our space is to make sure that we can maybe burst into their space or we can have access into to the environment for disaster recovery or whatever it might be. But I think where you've got dedicated workloads and you have customers who are um, really wanting to keep their data separate I don't know if that's necessarily going to, going to be the right um, environment for, for the customers right now. In the longer term, possibly. But I think the biggest way we can drive that is on cost. If we can try and keep, be cost effective and make sure we deliver a, a really good service, uh, we can still compete with the Amazons of the world. Well, I like to believe that. I think because 
they, they're certainly making a, a, a takeover in a lot of the spaces. But we haven't had any uptake, believe it or not, in the, our, our particular spaces yet. Well, in a great, my, my yeah. The reason I set it up is if I'm a retailer, uh, you know, I've talked to plenty of retailers. I mean, you know, take Walmart for example. You know, yeah. Walmart heavily involved in what they're doing. You know, no way are they ever going to do any service on Amazon. So yeah. I said you're actually in a sector of the marketplace that I think um, no one is Amazon proof, but yeah. that they have it in their own vested interest not to support Amazon mm. because of the dot com uh, piece that they have. Sure. Do, do, do yeah. you think that, that's definitely no, true? I, I, agree, I agree with you, but you know, you never know because yeah. uh, over time, don't be complacent. And when it comes to digital disruption, is that if they do decide to go, you need to be have a counter and make sure that you can deliver those services. Uh, comprehensively, I think the biggest benefit we have is that we go right down the value chain and across the stack, in the sense that if you're going to start ticking all the boxes around quality of service, 24 by 7, uh, response times, uh, availability, uh, yes, Amazon offers those, but when you do all of those together, there could be some pricing pressures, I think, coming from Amazon. So we, we'll keep to aim that and keep our customers happy on service. Okay, uh, so you, you mentioned and, and before. Sorry, I also understand the industry, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, are, are any nuggets that you had from the panel discussion, either for Dr. Langer or questions from the audience that uh, yeah. we can give as kind of a final word uh, for sure. the interview? I think it's around uh, the digital disruption in the sense that it's coming in every industry. And I think we need to just be aware of that and, and uh, make sure that we never get complacent to our business and always trying to drive it to, to new levels and exactly what we're going to do uh, today is not going to be what we're going to do tomorrow. So let's be aware of it and uh, drive the solutions and hopefully through Nutanix. <laughs> Nigel Henderson with UCS Solutions. Thanks so much for sharing with us what's happening in your environment. We'll be back with lots more coverage here. You're watching theCUBE.